Hi, hello, and welcome to episode 12 of The Knitting Esquire, a YouTube channel all about my knitting and crafting adventures. My name is Candice. You can find me over on Instagram as Candice Sue ESQ Knits and over on Ravelry as The Knitting ESQ. Today I have two finished objects. I have a couple of works in progress, some future planned projects that I need your input on, and a couple of procurements. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Um, I haven't done one of these in a little while, and so I thought that with the last video that went up, I should probably do a new introduction of myself for all of the new viewers and a refresher for all of you OGs. So again, my name is Candice. I love to knit. That is my primary crafting. However, as you can see by the lovely sewing machine next to me, I do find myself getting into some quilting and bag making. Um, I live in Florida in the Orlando area with my husband and our two kiddos. Um, we have two boys, 13 and 10, and you know, we're, we're busy with them. Um, as the user handle uh, alludes to, I am an attorney. That is my day job. I'm a, actually a general counsel. And so this is a nice retreat away from my daily work activities. So um, that is me in a nutshell. I guess from here we will hop right in to the finished objects. Everything that I talk about today you will find in the description box below. There should be a Chevron. You just click on more and I will make sure to link all of my Ravelry project pages for everything that I talk about today as well as all of the other designers and dyers of the fantastic yarn that I am so thankful that I get to use every day. Um, so let's get into finished object number one uh, without uh, any, you know, drum roll or anything like that. It is a pair of socks. Of course, that seems to be all I want to do these days. Um, and I will talk more about that in my works in progress. Um, however, sock pair number one is all done. I was almost done with these on the last episode. However, um, I finished them shortly thereafter. Um, this yarn is let's get the close up there yeah um is by emma's yarn it is on her practically perfect sock base which is an 80 percent superwash merino 20 percent nylon base this is one of her crazy beautiful colorways so that's actually the name of it it doesn't have a, a particular name um on this pair i decided to do a little pop of color at the top with a double stripe kind of like a, a tube sock if you will and then carry that into the heels and then down into the toes i thought that was a fun little summer touch um as always i knit these on uh my addy turbo rockets which are nine inch circulars uh us one or 2.25 millimeter needles and I always knit um, for myself uh, 56 stitches. I like the ankle to be a little bit tighter and that seems to have enough stretch to get over my foot, but then also it stays up on my leg instead of slipping down. So I've noticed, um, you know, I guess if the 56 stitches seems a little bit tight to adults, you could always do like a really super stretchy uh, maybe a German twisted or an even stretchier cast on with the 56 stitches so that this part gets over but then once it's on your leg it hugs and stays snug. I also noticed that because I am doing the smaller size for an adult sock the heels don't slip either um, even while I'm wearing them in shoes the heels stay really tight and in place um, and I always do a standard um, slip stitch heel like this um, that's my go-to heel i love them um i've tried the um like the cut in heel it just there's i don't know if it's just the shape of my heel or how this like 
cups the heel but with the cut in there's just not enough there and those tend to fall down and then I find this part down at like the like further down um so that's my preferred method um I did 20 20 rounds for the cuff 60 rounds for the leg and then I average about 50 rounds once I get through the heel flap and gusset 50 rounds before I start the decrease on the toe and that makes a perfect size sock for my foot. Um, so I cast these on on June 25th and I finished them on June 30th. So this was a quick pair for me. Um, this makes pair number 17 for 24 of 2024 and pair number five for summer sack camp. So that is my crazy beautiful color vanilla socks actually i didn't say that this is the vanilla socks pattern by the crazy sock lady um i think my other one is as well and so that makes finished object in pair number one for this episode done dusted and now i can get them off my sock blockers um so as you can imagine my final second finished object is also another pair of socks and quite frankly I didn't think I was gonna get these done I feel like I was dragging on with getting a pair of socks off my needles it was actually kind of a little bit um I don't know not motivational whatsoever but I think I've gotten over that hump again I'll go into that um it has to do with a uh, work in progress that I had cast on so a new cast on and a work in progress and um i think i was feeling a little bit defeated so i will go into that but i got so excited i couldn't wait to go over this in a procurement portion i had to cast it on nearly immediately after i got it in the mail so um, I had signed up for the three by the seas mystery. I think this one went live in maybe May of this year. Um, it was for their, uh, Barbie themed summer socks and it's, it's Barbie. Just you'll look at it and you'll say, yeah, that's Barbie. If you haven't seen it already. Um, so I'm super thrilled with these and they are so fun. I'm glad that they're done so I can wear them. So pair number two for today's episode. This is Malibu Dreams by Three by the Seas Designs. And this is on their um, Santa Bell base, which is a 75% superwash merino and a 25% nylon base. Again, same stats. Um, 56 stitch cast on 20 rounds for the cuff. I love this like hot pink solid color and then 60 rounds for the heel all the way on down. And I decided to use up the bulk of the mini and, uh, I did the mini for the heels, toes and cuff on this one. And it just makes it fun and broken up. Um, so again, US one, 2.25 millimeter, um, nine inch circular needles. I cast this pair on July 3rd and I had the first sock nearly done maybe July 6th, but, um, I got stalled a little bit distracted, if you will. And distracted is probably the better word, um, for what I what I'm going to get into um and so I did not finish these until just this past weekend which was July 14th I'm so glad they're off my needles I actually gave the leftover yarn to my mom who was down here um from Friday to Sunday this past weekend and so that was a fun little treat for her to take home so she can do something with this fun bright perfectly pink Barbie yarn so this pair makes pair number 18 for 24 in 2024 we're getting close and pair number six for summer sock camp so yay for finished socks 
And that is all that I have for finished objects, Ob ab objects, objects, <laughs> this episode, um, which will bring me in to my works in progress. So I have to start off with a little bit of a story here. I had decided that I thought it was a good idea for me to try and do a July vlog. And I was all gung ho, days one through four went quite well, probably because I had a long weekend for the 4th of July and I was like, oh, I'm killing it, this is great. And then the day started to go on and I was like, man, I am not a fun person <laughs> to watch a daily vlog of. My life is the same thing over and over again every day. Nobody really wants to watch me get up, get ready for work, knit a little bit, go to work, come home, make dinner, knit a little bit, and then start all over the next day. The weekends are filled with kids' sports. I would just, I couldn't get over that. That's probably not very exciting for anybody, including myself. So... Um, where that took me though, was as part of that daily vlog, I was going to open up this fantastic July advent from, um, cafe creations, which is their, her, my little pony advent. And the yarn is fantastic. I love her yarn. It's an 80, 20 base and it's all sparkle Stellina fantasticness. Um, I just, again, I couldn't, I couldn't keep up with the vlog part of it. So then I was like, okay, well, I'll just post pictures and do the daily thing like I do for my Christmas advents. And for some reason, I don't know if it's July versus December. I just, I wasn't there. I was feeling like this is a chore, trying to get this pattern done every day and open the yarn. And I just, I couldn't do it anymore. So I think I stopped at day 10. So I'm like a week behind. I don't even think I've opened up yarn since the 10th. That's probably right. I'm not even certain. I gotta go look. I'm not, I might be in the middle of this color for the, for day 10. <laughs> I started off this project by doing the, I was going to do the trifle wrap by Helen Stewart and I cast it on. And I got through maybe day two or three on that pattern and I had messed up day one and I was like, you know, I don't really want to go back. I should have just gone back or started over, but I didn't. So then when I messed up on day three and I didn't catch it for a couple of rows, I said, I messed up already on day one. Now I've messed up day three. Just this is not, this pattern isn't working for me. So. It wasn't difficult. I just don't think I was braining very well. And so I ripped it all out. And my husband was like, you should have totally recorded yourself doing that. Like what a great fail to post for everybody to see that that happened. So it happened. Um, there was a fail there. Um, but I started over. Um, instead, I switched over to the Adventure Scarf Pattern by Ambo O'Brien. This is the scarf pattern. I technically do the wrap for the, the Christmas advents that I get into, um, but I did the scarf for this one just because I was like, it's half the stitches. Maybe I'll feel a little better. If it's not as big of a project each day, um, the Helen Stewart, it was like 200, 200 stitches in the row. And some of these rows were like 18 or 20 rows. And I'm just thinking at first I was like, oh, I can definitely get that done in a day. It's all, a lot of it was all stockinette or not stockinette, just knit front and back, add a couple of yarn overs here to make a little bit of a lace. It just, uh, it just wasn't happening for me. The adventurer wrap and the scarf is just a smaller version of that. Um, I've done over and over again. I think I have like one, two, three, four, maybe five versions of it already. So of the wrap, which is actually just adding a few extra stitches to make it wider. Um, so I was like, okay, I can do this. So I started it and 
it looks like I did not get all the way through day 10. No spoilers here because I'm only 10 days in. So this is the Adventurer Scarf by Amba O'Brien. I'm knitting this on size US 5 needles and I can never see. Um, again, I don't know why you bear with me on this, but these are on. Um, you're probably screaming it at me. I don't know. I can't read with the. I don't know. <laughs> Just this, that's the way <laughs> July has been. Um, anyway, here's what I've done so far. And it is beautiful and sparkly and colorful. Quite frankly, the day one, um, which is called Fair Play is the colorway name, is absolutely just so beautiful. Um, there we go. I also like this little middle section here. So it's pretty and sparkly and fun. And I think at this point in time, I will just do this when I feel like I want to open up a new skein. Um, it's all minis. Doesn't take that much. I have so much left over. I haven't weighed. I probably have out of a 10 gram mini seven, six or seven grams left. So we will see, sorry, 20 gram mini. These are 20 grams. I was thinking they were 10. These are 20 gram minis. I probably have 16, 15 or 16 grams here, I would say. Um, so I will get through, I will get on with this. Eventually I will finish it. I am not going to force myself to do this every day anymore because that's what I was doing. I was forcing it. Um, so I'll pick it up when I feel like I want to add some color. Hopefully it'll be done soon. Maybe I'll end up catching it up. I don't know. I'm just going to let it flow. Right now the socks are speaking to me. I think part of it has been too, is that I hadn't gotten much sock knitting done because I was working on this and to get one section done for day, per day for the colors, it was basically the bulk of my knitting for the day. The only time I had, and I think the socks were just calling to me. So I have all of these lovely little leftovers and I think eventually I will get to adding these to a cozy, cozy memories blanket and then maybe a pair of scrappy socks out of the rest of it. And I thought should probably take care of it. So, um, that is whip number one, my adventurer scarf by Ambo O'Brien with my lovely Yarn Cafe Creations, My Little Pony, July 2024 Advent. And it is living in a project bag that I made out of tulip pink fabric. It's so cute and so perfect for all of the bright, fun colors that come with this project. And inside is all rainbows. So that is whip number one. Whip number two is living in another bag that I've created. Again, I am a big lover of tulip pink. Inside, I think this one is just giant, yeah, giant polka dots in there. And so let's talk about this project. I finished those Barbie socks on Sunday and I knew I was gonna finish them. So I, we were running out the door and I was like, oh no, I'm going to finish these. If we go somewhere, I'm going to need a different pair of socks because all I had left was like a few rows of the toe. So I quickly grabbed something that looked fun and wound it up and out the door we went. So I have started a pair of socks, of course. Um, vanilla sock pattern by the crazy sock lady, 56 stitches, 20 cast on or 20 rows for the cuff. Uh, US one nine inch circulars. This is on a freckled whimsy colorway from May of 2023 when I was part of the Wednesday, her Wednesday club, the show Wednesday from Netflix. The colorway is called Wolfing Out, and this is on her serendipity base, which is a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and it is a an eight stripe repeat. And I'm loving these. Look how cute they are. So fun. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then the repeat starts here. And as you can see, I am almost done with sock number one. I started this on Sunday. I have this really cute bumblebee here as my progress keeper. Forgot where I got this from. This may have come from Three by the Sea Designs. Maybe? Hmm. I don't remember anymore. Um, so, yes, I am loving this, this sock. What else is there about this one? Um, it'll be done soon, and then I will get on to sock number two. I will have another pair of socks here shortly. Um, I think that is my works in progress for now. Um, as you can see, as soon as I switched from that adventurer scarf, I just like blew it away with the socks. So that's, that's what I have on, on that. This seems to be going faster than I thought it was going to go. Um, so I guess from here I will do my procurements. I don't have that many of them, um, but I will talk about those. And then I want to go into, uh, a future project that I have in mind and I need your help to decide which pattern I should choose. And you'll understand why once we get into that. So let's move on in to the procurements. Um, as you know, I have been collecting all year the OWL um, monthly release that Goosey Fibers is doing. It is always on her Goosey Sock Base, which is a 75-25 blend. Um, and this one for her June colorway, she chose to do an Owl Bear, which is a Dungeons and Dragons creature, which I just thought was so fun. Um, so... I had to continue getting my owls. This is the main colorway, Owl Bear, and I also got the fun mini set to go with it. And so I have all of these fantastic minis. So Lucy Fibers. And then um, my Magpie Fiber Society quarterly, bi monthly quarterly, bi-monthly, bi-monthly, I think it is, club came in. It is their number 37 colorway. I always choose the speckles. It's on their swanky sock base, which is an 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon blend. And for this colorway, it's very summery. And the speckles are just wonderful. So that is Magpie Fibers. And then last but not least, actually, actually I have four, but um, not last weekend, but the weekend before we decided to take, so that would have been the weekend of 4th of July, we decided to take a quick trip to Miami on that Sunday. Is it Sunday? Saturday. Saturday. Um, to go see a Marlins game. And on our way down, my husband made sure that we stopped at some yarn stores that I actually hadn't been to. Um, one of them was closed, so I didn't get to go. But the second one that we went to was called Sheep Thrills in West Palm Beach area of Florida. And they had so much fun yarn there. It was actually a very large yarn store. And um, they had all kinds of speckles going on. So I felt in a speckly mood apparently because that is literally all I walked away with. So I have not ever used hedgehog fibers and I saw that they had it in the shop and I loved the colorway. And so I had to pick it up um, this is on their, it's just says sack yarn, which is a 90% superwash merino, 10% nylon, and the colorway is called sorbet. And I just thought that this was a really fun summery color, and I'm just loving it. 
living for it. The next colorway, I have never heard of this brand, actually. It almost seemed like it was kind of commercial, um, but like a hand-dyed commercial. It's called Gusto Wool, and this is the no uh, Nocta base, which is 80% merino wool, 20% nylon. And it is color 1215. And I just loved the black speckles in this. It was very like 90s and fun. And that's the ball band, yarn band. And then another new to me is this brand and it's made in Turkey. No, this is also Gusto Wool. Um, so this is the same, but this is on their 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon base. This is color 1106. It doesn't really have, yep, yeah, that's just the name. And it is like this, oh, it is great. And there's like this orange and it's fun and funky and I love it. And then I saw this other brand that I've never used before as well. It is called, is this Sprout? Fiber Seed, I think is the name of it. Fiber Seed. Um, the colorway is Ambrosia SP147. And this is a washable merino wool, 90%, 10% nylon. This one's actually a bigger skein. It's 510 yards. And so I actually picked this up because it reminds me of somebody special. And I am going to turn this into um, a party of five cowl. Um, you've seen me wear mine previously, um, but I will stick a picture in here of that. And so I'm going to do that as a Christmas gift. It actually will knit up pretty quickly. And this skein is just, it just screams this individual. And so I'm excited to give this one away. And so those are my procurements. Okay. Future project planning. I have said for a few years that I really, really want to enter in one of my finished objects into the Florida State Fair. I think this year is the year that I'm going to commit to doing it, but I just need to figure out what exactly it is that I want to create. So I know I want it to be, so let me caveat by saying I get very picky with myself on how good it has to be in order for me to submit it. And so for me personally, it can't be an easy project. To me, it needs to be something that looks intricate, that probably is intricate. Um, I'm looking forward to maybe learning some new techniques, but um, I want it to not just get like entered in because anybody can enter in. I want it to be first, if not best in show. Um, that is the competitive spirit in me. I feel like if I'm not creating something at that caliber, then what's the point of doing it other than to bring me joy and then it's for me only and then I don't need to submit it. So if I'm actually going to commit to submitting something to the fair, I've, I've got to make sure that in my mind it's going for like first, if not best of best in show. I, I can't explain what's going on in there. Maybe it's the first oldest child in me. It's my competitiveness. I don't, my OCD, I don't know what it is, but that's, that's where I'm at with this plan. <laughs> so I'm going to the festival and I need to have a good project to submit. So here are the, I came up with seven designs that I would like to choose from. I'm going to talk a little bit about each one and I will put pictures of finished objects. Um, 
up here so that you can see which ones I'm talking about. But if you could, in the comments below, tell me which one you like the most, or if you have something outside of these seven that you think would be fantastic, but keep in mind, these will all look, you'll get an underlying theme of where I'm going with my thought process on what I want to do. Just, I need to pick which one to do. Now, given what I'm planning to do, we have to submit by, I think it was the beginning of January. It has to be done and I have to drive it over to Tampa. So I have from now until January ish, probably need to get this done before December to be really honest. So that way I can, I'm going to want to do some Advent something in December. So I need to get started is where I'm at. So please help me pick. I would like to make a decision here in the next week or so. Okay. Option number one, Helen Stewart just did her make along recently, her mystery make along. I think it was a mystery, but maybe it was just a make along. Um, it is the 24 birds and I'm just going to pull up on my computer here. So if I'm looking away, that's what it is. Um, it is her 24 birds shawl. And this one is so pretty. Um, you can actually see the designs in there and where the name 24 birds comes from. Now she has a smaller version, um, which I think is a wrap type version, but I want to do the bigger one. Um, it is much more intricate and it's, a, it's very beautiful. Um, it's knit on US size six needles. So I think it will go relatively quickly, especially since it is on fingering weight yarn. Um, I love the design that it makes, but part of me looks at it and thinks maybe this one is just a little bit too, um, too simple. I don't know. Um, simple is not the right word. I just, it seems like there's quite a bit of stock in it, in it, even with all of the beautiful lace design, but I will let you tell me what you think. So look at the picture, tell me where that ranks, if that would be one that you would choose. Don't give me rankings, just like yes or no. I like number one, I like this one. So that way I can tally up and see which one gets the most votes, because that's probably how I'm going to have to make a decision here. Okay. Option number two that I really enjoyed is called the, mm, do, 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 the, I didn't even pull this one up. There's one called the Spring Lake Shawl, and this one's by Elizabeth Morrison. It's also knit on US 6 needles, and um, this one actually only takes two skeins of yarn. So let me know if you like that one. Number three, and this one I really have been leaning toward, but I need some help. Um, this one is called The Wild Swan, and it is by Anne Lisa Mygard and Nim Teasdale. It takes two skeins of yarn, and it's knit on US 4 needles, so it's, it's tighter. But man, isn't that picture beautiful where... Ugh, I just love the way that you can see through it and it truly looks like swan wings. It's really pretty. So right now I feel like that's my front runner for me personally, but I like all of these other ones too. So, okay. Number four is the Falderall, um, which was a 2023 mystery knit along by Rosemary Hill. This was like one of the first ones I found by Rosemary Hill. And then I started looking through her collection and I fell into a rabbit hole. And you will see the other ones that I have found. And now this is why I'm in the position that I'm in. Um, the Falderall is knit on US 4 needles and it also takes two skeins of yarn. I'm not worried about the amount, but it, if you have an idea, should it be also... Should I do something that's a little more variegated, speckled, or I'm kind of leaning toward just finding some beautiful tonal colors that I like and making it all one color so that way the design pops. So let me know your thoughts on that one too. Okay, 
Option number five is The Time Heals Shawl by Rosemary Hill. Again, two skeins. This one, I would definitely probably, I don't know, this one could easily be just two of the same tonal color skeins, I think would make that design just really pop. And it's so beautiful. It's also knit on US size four needles. And number six, I'm going to switch these around to keep with the Rosemary Hill theme since I really, really fell down that rabbit hole. Um, this one is called Dancing Between Raindrops. And the drape of this one is just stunning. Stunning. Um, the stock photo that they put in here of it, I just, I, it's beautiful. It's knit with four skeins on US size six needles. And I think because it's a fingering weight yarn in the US six, you really do get just that lovely, airy, like elegant, beautiful look. I also really love the details um, of the scalloped or the pico at the edges. I think that's beautiful. And then last but not least, I stumbled upon the Elvis shawl by Marina Gorshton. And this is also using two skeins of yarn knit on US six needles. This one I would probably definitely do as just a single tone um, shawl to pull out the beautiful designs there. So I those are my seven options that I've been muddling over and I can't decide what I want to do. Again, I've, my eye is drawn to the wild swan and the dancing between raindrops shawls, but I can't decide. So please vote. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you think tonal all the way, one color, or if you think like a variegated or a speckle would be better. And if you think that you have any other ideas or options or designs um, that kind of, as you can see, like the theme that I was going with in these different ones, and you can see them here, I'll do all of them numbered. Um, so between one through seven, you can kind of see the theme that I'm going through here. Um, if you have an idea of a design that you think kind of fits the bill of what I'm looking for and would get me best of show. <laughs> Such a ridiculous goal. Um, drop it in the comments. I really appreciate like all of the comments that I've received. Um, I would love, I, I need some input, please help. Um, so I need to make a decision quickly so I can get this started and moving on. Um, that will probably be my next cast on and um yeah we can go from there the adventure um cardigan actually it's a it's a pullover that i'm turning into a cardigan i've made a little bit of progress on but not enough to really bring it up for today's video but that still is happening on the side so again that was distracting for my socks as well i just summer sock camp ends in like six weeks and that's not very much time and i love summer sock camp i don't know what it is about that that motivates me to keep knitting more socks but all i could think of when i was working on that july advent was i'm not i'm not gonna have very many socks done in july and i've been getting two or three pairs done a month and it just i wasn't gonna hit that number and so i was feeling very deflated and unmotivated so you just gotta do what you do and move it along and pick it back up later right that's why we all have project bags that eventually I should probably go through and determine what I need to do with those projects but we'll save that for another day we'll use that for a different um episode content so okay that's it for me today please 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 i'm begging you to comment below and let me know what design i should choose and um, if you have any recommendations on a what color you think would look good whether it should be variegated speckled or tonal um i would greatly appreciate your input 
Um, so for me, uh, please, if you like the content today, like, subscribe, ring the little bell, all of the stuff that YouTube loves, and I will catch up with you on the next episode. Bye.